Another key with pomp, with triumph, with reveling. Happy be that these youths are now Thanks. Thanks, good Aegea. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. This man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander. Thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sunk and turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And, my gracious Duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg thee to privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman but to her death, according to our law, immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. And himself he is, but in this kind, once in your mother's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my mother look but with my eyes. Rather your eyes must with her judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, but I beseech your grace to know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Know of your youth, examine well your blood, whether if you yield not to your mother's choice, you shall endure the livery of a nun. So I will grow, so live, so die, my lord. My soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause. And by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, either prepare to die that day for disobedience to your mother's will, or else wed Demetrius as she would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy grace now to my certain right. You have her mother's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's do you marry first. Scornful Lysander, true, he hath my love, but what is mine, my love shall render his. As she is mine, all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. My lords, I am as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love's more than his, my fortunes every way is fairly ranked. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius all about to his men. They have lost Tanator's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have had hurt so much 
and with Demetrius thought to have spoken thereof. But being never full of self affairs, my mind did lose it. Demetrius and Aegea come along. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your mother's will, or else the law of Athens may yield you up, which by no means we may extenuate to death or to a vow of single life. Come, Hippolyta. What cheer, my love? Demetrius and Gia come along. I have some business to employ you with against our nuptials that nearly concerns yourselves. With duty and desire, we follow you. Chance the roses there do fade so fast. Be like for one to pray, which I could well between them from the tempest of my eyes. For all that I could ever read, could ever hear my tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Let us teach our trial patience as it is a customary cross, as due to love is thoughts, dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancies followers. A good persuasion, therefore hear me her. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, she hath no child. From Athens is her house group, seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee, and to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night. And then, in the wood, a league about the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena, to do observance to a morn of May, there I will stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest spell, tomorrow will I truly meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. God see, fair Helena, whither away? Call you be fair? And that fair can unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. How oh, happy fair. Sickness is catching. How oh, were favor so. Your words would I catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. Who oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you slay the most of Demetrius's heart. Take comfort. He shall no more see my face. Lysander and myself shall fly this place. Oh, to your minds we will unfold a time that lover's lights doth still conceal. Through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood, where often you and I upon fate primrose beds were wont to lie, my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence turn away our eyes from Athens. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, my love. We shall starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. I will, my love. As you on him, Demetrius dotes on you. How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens, I am thought just as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know all, but he do know. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is when Cupid painted blind. For ere he looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved and showers of oaths did melt. I will tell the fair Hermia's flight, then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense for me to enrich my pain to have a sight thither and back again. You were best to call them generally, a man by man according to the script. Well, here are the scrolls of every man's name thought fit throughout all Athens to plan our interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quincy, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so go to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruelest death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and to Mary. Now, Good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. And masters, spread yourselves. Nick Bottom, the oh, weaver. Uh, ready, and name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallantly for love. Oh, oh. that will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. Uh, uh, to the rest yet, my chief humor is that of a tyrant. I could play Hercules rarely, or a part to, to tear a cat in, to make all split. <clears throat> the raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates. 
and Phoebus Carr shall shine from far and make him mar the foolish fates. <laughs> now, this was lofty. Now, uh, name the rest of the place. This was this was Ercles' vein, like a tyrant's vein. Now, uh, a lover, a lover is more condoling. <laughs> Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. You must take this be on you. What is this be? A wandering knight? It is thy woman, Paramus must love. <laughs> <laughs> no, babe, not play a woman. I have a beard. Coming. Well, that's all one. You may play it in a mask. You may speak as small as oh. you will. Oh, and I may hide my face. Let me play this be too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. This day, this day. Ah, Paramus, my lover, dear. Now, this be dear and lady dear. <laughs> no, no, you Pyramus and you Fisby. Well, proceed. Robert Starveling, the tailor. Robert Starveling. Oh. Here, Peter Quince. You Fisby's mother. Tom Snow, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You Pyramus's father. Myself, Fisby's father. Snug, the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope there is a play fitted. Let me the lion's party. Praise it be given me, for I am slow study. You may do it, extempore, for it's nothing but roar. Oh, let me play the lion too! I will roar, and I will do any man's heart good to hear. I will roar! Oh, oh, oh. I will make the duke say, let him roar again. Let him roar again! If you shall do it too terribly, you will fright the duchess and the ladies, and that will be enough to make us shriek. That would hang us every mother's son! Grant you friends, if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you as twere any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus. <laughs> For Pyramus is a proper man, a lovely man, a man you'll see on the summer's day at night, a most lovely gentleman like man. Therefore, we must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake, and what be it right best to play it in? Why, what you will. But masters, here are your parts, and I request you, entreat you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night, and meet me in the palace wood a mile out by moonlight. For if we meet in the city, we'll be dogged with company, and our vice is known. I pray you, fail me not. There we shall meet, and we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. And take pains, be perfect. Adieu. At the Duke's Oak we meet. Ah, enough. Hold, or cut bowstrings. Wait for 
Helmets by moonlight. Proud to Tanya. What, jealous Oberon? Fairy skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry, rash wanton, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest steep of India. But that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your buskined mistress and your warrior love, the Theseus must be wed. And you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Let my credit with the pot, and knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Oh, these are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead. But with thy brawl thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the wind, piping to us in vain as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling across the land hath every pelting river scorned and overbearing its continents. The human mortals want their winter here, and through this distemperature we see the seasons change. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, the angry winter, change their wanted liveries. And the mazed world by their increase now knows not which is which. And the same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you mean it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross Robra? For all I want is a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order. Full often has she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands when we have laughed to watch the sails conceive and grow big-bellied with the wanton wind which she with pretty and with swimming gait following her womb then rich with my young squire would imitate and sail upon the land. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake do I rear up her boy. And for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood until you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our rounds and see our moonlight revels go with us. And if not, shun me and I will spare thy haunts. Give me the boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away! We shall chide downright if longer I stay. time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed, loosed his love shaft from his bow, it fell upon a little western flower, before, milk white, now purple with love's wound, fetch me this flower, the herb I showed thee once, with the juice of it, on sleeping eyelids laid, will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again, heir of a Leviathan, and swim a league. Put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. <laughs> Having watched this juice, I watched Chitanya as she's asleep, and lay the liquor up in her eyes. Next thing when she waking looks upon, whether it be a lion or bull or wolf, a manly muck your busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I could take off this charm, as I can with another herb, and make her render up her page to me. But, who comes here? I am invisible. I shall overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. But you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather do I not? In plainest truth, tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you. And even for that, do I love you the more? I am 
am your spaniel. And Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me. Only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. Who at worse a place can I beg your love? In a place of such high respect can be used to do your dog. You do impede your modesty too much. To leave the city into one's hands that loved you not. Your virtue is my privilege. For that, it is not the night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night, nor doth this wood lack worlds of company. For you, in my respect, are all the world. Then how could it be said I'm alone when all the world is here to look on me? I will run from thee, and hide me in the brakes, and leave thee to the mercy of the wild beasts. The wildness has not so hard as you. Run when you will. The story shall be changed. Apollo flies, and Daphne holds the chase. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. For if thou follow me, do not believe that I shall be the bishop in the wood. I, in the temple, in the town, and in the field, you do me mischief. Fie, Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed, and we are not made to woo. I follow thee, and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love. So well! Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray you, give it to me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, and the oxen are nodding by the groves. There seeks a Tanya some time of the night, lulled in these flowers, but dances in delight. With the juice of this, on Titania's eyes, I'll make her full of hatred fantasies. But first, take thou some of it. There's a sweet Athenian lady in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, where the next thing he may espy may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on, affected with some care, for he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And meet me here ere the first cock crow. You're not, my lord, you shall do so. Dost wake, do for thy true love take. Love and length for his sake. Be it out or cat, the part of four bristled hair. And thine eye that shall appear, thy wake is it is thy dear. Wake, when some vile thing is near. <laughs> Fair love, you faint wandering in the wood. And speak troll, why I forgot our way. Rest us, Hermia, if you think it good and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out of bed. Fry upon this bank shall rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both. One bed, one heart, two bosoms, and one trough. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off. Yet, do not lie so near. Oh, take the scent sweet of my innocence. I mean that my heart unto yours is knit, so that but one heart we can make of it. Then, by your side, no bedroom beating an eye for lies and so, Hermia. I do not lie. Not for sure my manners and my pride of Hermia meant to say Lysander lied. Now, gentle friend for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty. Amen. Amen to that fair prayer, say I. And then life when I am loyalty. Here's my bed. Sleep give thee all his rest. With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed.
night in silence. Neck 
and he himself must speak through, saying <clears throat> thus, <coughs> or to the same defect. Ladies, or fair ladies, I would wish you, no, I would request you, no, I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. If you think that I come hither as a lion, it would pity you my life. No, no, I am no such thing. I am a man! <laughs> As other men are. Well, that's all one. But there are two hard things at it. One, you must bring moonlight into the chamber. Four, you know, Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Does the moon shine the night that we play and play? A calendar, a, a calendar. Look in the almanac. Find out moonshine. <laughs> Find out moonshine. Yes, it does shine that night. Why then may you leave a casement to the great chamber window where we play open? And the moon may shine in at the casement. I, or a, push, a person with lantern and bush of thorns, must come in and present moonshine. For, or, for by moonshine, here was it is, we meet. But then there's another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber. For, says the story, Pyramus and Thisbe talk through a chink of the wall. But we can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall. And let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus. And through that cranny shall Pyramus and this big whisper. <laughs> well, that's all one. Come sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, once you have spoken your speech, enter into that break, and everyone according to his cue. What hemp and humspun do we have swaggering here so near the cradle of the fairy queen? What? A play toward? Yes. I'll be an auditor. Not too too proud if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus, this beat, stand for. Thisbe! The flowers of odious, savor sweet. Odors! Odorous. Odors! Savor sweet. So hath thy breath. <laughs> My dearest Thisbe, dear. <laughs> but hark! A voice! Stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. Stranger Pyramus and errors played here. Must I speak now? Aye, Mary, but I should not speak that part yet, for you must understand he goes to see a noise and it's come again. Most radiant Pyramus, most only one of you, I've caught the red rose of triumph and briar, as true as true as horse that yet would never tire. I will meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninus tomb, man. <laughs> your speech, your parts, and cues, and all. Pyramus, enter. Your cue is passed, it's never tired. Oh, as true as true's horse that yet would never tire. Oh, no. If I were fair, Thisbe, I were only that. Oh, my sister, Pray, From this place. From this 
plate from this place. Do what they can! Ugh. No, I, I will walk up and down here. <laughs> I will sing. They shall hear that I am not afraid. He also got so black of you. With orange tawny pattern. The throstle with his note so true, the wren and little wet. My angel wakes me from my flowery hat. <laughs> the finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song cuckoo gray. <clears throat> Whose note full many a man doth mock, and dares not answer next. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. My ear is much enamored of thy note, so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtues forth for force doth move me to say, I love thee. Oh! <laughs> Methinks, mistress. You should have little reason for that. And yet, to tell the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Oh, thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so, neither. Uh, but if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I would have enough to serve my own turn. Out of the wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state. And I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, while thou on a bed of pressed flowers dost sleep. And I will purge thy mortal grossness so, that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peace, blossom, cobweb, moss, mustard seed! <laughs> hey! Ready? And I, and I, and I. Where, Where shall we go? go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. Give him my love to bed and to arise, and pluck the wings from painted butterflies, to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to him, elves, mm. and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal, hail, hail, hail. Ah, I cry your worship's mercy. I shall desire you for acquaintance. Come, wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. Tie up my lover's tongue. Bring him silently. Ah, uh, I wonder if I'd tell you if you wake. The one next came in her eye. She must dote on an extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, Master Spirit? What night will now about this haunted grove? I miss whether the monster is in love! <laughs> in her close and consecrated bower, in her dull and sleeping hour, crude patches of her mechanicals work for bed upon Athenian souls, met together to her supply, and set her for great Theseus' nuptial day. The shallowest, thick skin of that barren sort, who presented Pyramus, entered in a break. And at this advantage I did take, an ass no I fixed upon his head. Anon his thisby must be answered, and forth my mimic comes. When they him spy, away his fellows fly, and hear or or one falls. He murder cries, and help from apples calls. I led them on in distracted fear, and those sweet fear mistranslated there. And in that moment it came to pass, Britannia waked and straightway loved an ass. This falls up better than ever I could devise, but... Hast thou latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I bid thee do? I took him sleeping, and that is finished too. And the Athenian one by his side, that when he wake, of course she must be eyes. Stand aside, this is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Well, why rebuke you him that loves you so? Like breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Now I but chime, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, has given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being our shoes and blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. The sun was not so true unto the days he to me. What he have stolen away from sleep?
sleeping, Hermia? It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. And should a murderer look so dead and so grim? So should the murderer look and so should I. Pierce to the heart with their stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Paul, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him to me? I'd rather give his carcass to my house. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. Once tell true, hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, brave touch! You spend your passion on a misprized wound. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught that I can tell. I pray thee then, tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege, never to see me more. And from thy hated presence part I, see me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no falling here in this fierce vein. Here therefore for a while I will remain, so sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow, and bankrupt sleep the sorrow of. <laughs> what hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and lay some love juice on some true love's sight. I'm of thy misprison must perforce ensue. Some true love turn, but not a false turn true. About the wood, go swifter than the wind. Helena of Athens. Look, thou find. By some illusion, bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery. Sink in the apple of his eye. When his love he doth espy, let her shine as gloriously as Venus in the sky. And if she be by, beg her for remedy. Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me bleeding for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond passion see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. Stand aside, the noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once move one that needs to be sport alone. Why do you think that screw and sport? You do advance your cunning more and more. Those vows are Hermia's. Do you give her over? I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind. Now you give her over. Demetrius loves her and he loves not you. Oh, Helen, <gasps> goddess, nymph divine, to what my love shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is money. Oh, how ripe and show. Those kissing cherries hefty grow. Oh, let me kiss. This princess of your wife, this seal of bliss. Oh, spite! Oh, hell! I see you are both sentiment against me for your merriment. Can you not hate me as I know you do? But you must join in souls to mock me too? You both are rivals, and love Hermia, but now both rivals, to mock Helena. You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so. For you love Hermia, this you know I know. And here, with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena, to me bequeath, whom I do love, and will do to my death. <laughs> Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will not. And ere I loved her, all that love is gone. And here to Helen, it is home return, there to remain. It is not so. Despairs not the faith thou dost not know. Lest thy peril thou abide it dear. Look where thy love comes. Daughter is thy dear. Strike tonight, that from the eye his function takes, the ear more quick of apprehension makes. My ear, I think it brought me to thy sound, but why, unkindly, did thou sleep me so? Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's <coughs> love, though null and abide, bear Helena, who more guilds not than all yon fiery o's and eyes of light. Why seekest thou me? Could not the snake be though the pain I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think, it cannot be. Hello, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid. Have you contrived? Have you with these conspired to bait me with this foul derision? Is all the counsel we two have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours we have spent when we chid the hasty point in time for parting us? We grew together, like to a double cherry, seeming parted, but a union and partition. Two lovely berries. Molded of one stem, yet two seeming bodies, but one heart. And have you set our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, tis not maidenly, and our sex as well as I may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. 
me. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems as though you scorn me. Have you not sent Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love, Demetrius, who all but did spurn me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine, and rare, precious celestial? Wherefore tends this to her who he hates? And when doth Lysander deny your love, so rich within his soul, and tender me, pursuit affection, but by your setting on, by your consent. I understand not what you mean by this. I do persever, counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink each other, and hold the sweet jest up. But fare ye well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay gentle, Hannah, hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Hannah. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee, by my life I do. I say I love thee more than he can do. Thou say so, withdraw, approve it too. Quick, come. Lysander, where do you tend all this? Away we feel. No, no, sir. Seem to break loose, take on as you follow. <laughs> But yet not go, you are a tame man. Go. Hang off, thou cat, thou burr, vile thing, let loose row, shake thee from me like a serpent. Why have you grown so rude? What changes this sweet love? Thy love? Out, tawny tartar, out. Out, love, medicine, oh, hated potion, pet. Do not jest. Yes, sue, and so do you. Demetrius, I'll keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond. Were I perceive a weak bond hold you, I would not have it. What? Should I hurt her, strike her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me, wherefore, oh, what news, my love? Am I not her me? Or are you not Lysander? I'm as fair as I was there while. Since night you left me, yet since night you left me. Why then you left me of the gods? Forbidden earnest, shall I say? Aye, by my life. Be certain, nothing truer, tis no jest, that I do hate thee and love Helen. Oh, me, you juggler, you take your blossom, you thief of love! What have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? But, in faith, have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? For what? Will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you- Puppet? Why so? Aye, that way goes the king. <laughs> <laughs> now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height with her personage, her tall personage. And have you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted me, Paul, speak? How low am I? I am not yet so low that my nails can reach unto thine eyes! I tell you, though you mock me, big woman, let her not Let's 
vengeance. Still thou mistakest, or else commits thy knaveries willfully. Leave to me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Had you not told me I should know the man by the Athenian garments he had on? And so far for blame has proves my enterprise that I have in noise in Athenian's eyes. But I'm glad it did work out of the sort. Their jangling eyes see with sport. Thou seest these slumbers seek a place of fight. Hide there for Robin, overcast the night. Beat these testy rivals so astray they will not come within another's way. I... To owe their brows death counterfeiting sleep, crush this herb into Lysander's eyes. Which will take defense all error with his might and make his eyeballs roll over with wanted sight. And all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. While I in this affair do the employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy. And I'll to her charm now release from monstrous view, and all things should be in peace. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste, for cloud dragons proud cut the clouds full fast. But we are spirits of another sort. I with the morning's love of up make sport. But notwithstanding haste, make no delay. We shall affect this business yet ere day. Up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down. I am feared in fields and towns. Goblin, lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Dimitri? Speak thou now. Here, villain, broad and ready. I will beat thee straight. Follow my voice with light of brow. Speak again while I stand there. Art thou fled? Speak in some bush. Why dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars? And wilt not come? Come, regret. Come now, child. I'll whip thee with a rod and defile him, and I'll draw a sword on thee. Yea, where art thou? Follow my voice. I know manhood here. He goes before me and still dares me on. I come where he calls and then he is gone. The villain is much lighter heeled than I. I follow fast, but faster he did fly. That fallen am I in dark, uneven way. And here will rest me. Come, thou gentle day, for if thou show me thy gray light, I'll find Demetrius and run to this fight. Ho, 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 coward! Why comest thou not? Abide me if thou darest, for well I what? Rush before me, shifting every place, and darest not stand nor look me in the face. Where art thou? Come hither. I am here. Nay, though thou mockest me, thou shalt buy this dear. If ever I thy face by daylight see, then go thy way. Faintness constraineth me to measure out one's length on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. A long and tedious night. Habit thine hours shine company from the east, that I may back to Athens by daylight, and sleep that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eyes. Steal me a while for my own company. Here's three, but come one more. Two both kinds make score. And here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad to make poor females mad. Never so weary, never so unwell. The dabbled with the dew and torn with briars. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs cannot keep pace with my desires. Here I will rest me until the break of day. Put in shield by Sandra if I mean a play. Yikes. <laughs> I'll fly to your eye, gentle lover's remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest in true delight of thy former lady's eyes. And the country proverb known, every man shall have his own. In the presence of their waking, Jack shall have Jill and not will go ill. And the man shall have his mare again and all shall be well.
get some for me also. <coughs> I am marvelously hairy about the face. I'm such a tender ass. If my hair do but tickle me, I must scratch. Or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat? Truly a peck of provender. I could munch your good dry oats. I mean, thinks I have a great desire to a bottle of a good a a no fellow. Uh, hmm. But I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Welcome, Robin. Thus I'll cease the sweet sight. Her dotage now I do begin to pity. For meeting her late behind the woods, seeking sweet favors for this hateful fool. I did upbraid her and fall out with her. For I had in my pleasure taunted her. And she in mild terms begged for my patience. I then did ask of her her changing child, which straight she gave me. And her fairy did send him to my bower in fairyland. Now that I have the boy, I shall undo this hateful imperfection in her eyes. And my gentle buck, take the head of off this Athenian swain, when he waking when others do, may all of Athens be back again repaired. Now I shall wake my fairy queen. B, a cell, last want to be. C, a cell. Must want to see on Diane's bud or keep its flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, awake, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? I thought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do loathe this visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take up this head. From now wakest with thine own fool's eyes peep. Come, my queen. Now thou and I are new in amity. We shall dance to Duke Theseus' house, triumphantly, and bless it to all fair prosperity. There the faithful lovers shall be wedded with Theseus, all in jollity. Come, my lord, and in our flight. Tell me how it came this night, that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground.
go. Find out the Forester, for now our observations are performed. Mm. But thought, one lives for these. My lord, this is my daughter here asleep. And this Lysander, and this Demetrius and Helena, old daters Helena. I wonder if this being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the right of May, and up hearing our intents came here in grace of our solemnities. But speak, Aegea, is this not the day that Hermia should give the answer for choice? It is, my lord. Go, bid the huntsmen awake them with their horns. <laughs> Good morrow, friends. Begin these woodbirds but to couple now. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies, but how comes this gentle concord in the world? And just the hatred is so far from jealousy, and to sleep by hate and fear no enmity? My lord, I shall reply amazingly, half sleep, half waking. But as yet, I swear I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I would think, for truly would I speak, and now I do think me so it is. I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where he might be without the peril of the Athenian law. Enough, enough, my lord, you have enough. I begged the law of the law upon his head. They would have stolen away, they would. Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me, you of your wife, and to me of my consent, of my consent, that she should be your wife. My lord, fair lord Helen told me of their stealth in this point, and I in fury for their follow her, and fair mm -hmm. Helen, in fancy following me. But, my good lord, I want not by what power, but by some power it is, my love to her, melted as a snow, which seems to me now as the remembrance of an idol god. The object and pleasure of mine eye is only Helen. To her life, but my lord, was I betrothed, ere I saw her name, but like a sickness that I loathe it. But as in good health, come my natural taste, I now do wish it, love it, long for it, and more forevermore. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met, and of this discourse we shall hear more anon. Aegea, I will overbear your will, for in the temple by and by they shall eternally be knit with us. Away with us to Athens. Three and three. We will hold a feast with great solemnity. Come, Apollo. These things seem small and concerned. Like far off mountains turned into clouds. Methinks I see things with a parted eye when everything seems double. So me thinks. And I have found Demetrius, like a jewel, mine own, and not mine own. It seems to me that yet we sleep we dream. Do you not think the Duke was here, and bid us follow him? Yea, and my mother, and Hippolyta, and he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then, let us follow, and on the way let us recount our dreams. I will answer. And my next is most fair animus. And who? Oh, Peter Quince? Flute the bellows mender? Snout the tinker? Starveling? Ugh. God's my life stolen hence and left me here asleep. Fool. If you offer up to say what me thought I had, 
The eye of man hath not heard, man's ear hath not seen, man's hand is not able to taste, nor his tongue to conceive, nor man's heart is able to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream, shall be called the Bottom's Dream, for it hath no bottom. And I shall sing it at the latter end of a play before the Duke. And uh, a peradventure, to make it more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. Discord. 
A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I've known a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is too long, which makes it tedious. For there is not one word up, one player fitted, and tragical, my noble lord, it is. For Pyramus there doth kill himself. But when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, and made mine eyes water, but more merry tears. Passion of loud laughter is never shed. What are they that play it? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never doiled in their minds, and their unbreathed memories to do your pain. Then we will hear it. No, my noble lord, it's not for you. I've heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world to do your cruel pain and your nuptial. I will hear that play, for never anything can be amiss, for when simpleness and duty can tender it. Go bring them in, and take your seats, ladies. I love not to see wretchedness o'ercharged, and duty in his service perishing. Why, my gentle sweet, you shall hear no such thing. They say they can do nothing in this kind. The kind of we to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport should be take what they mistake. Please, Your Grace. The prologue is addressed. Let them approach. Oh, 
Methinks she be sensible and curse again. Uh, in truth, sir, she should not, but deceiving me is things be cute. She is to enter, and I'm to spy her through the wall. You shall see it. Move fall, Pat, as I told you. Yonder she comes. Trusty still. And I like Helen till fates me kill. Never shapless to progress was so true. As shapless to progress I to you. Oh, kiss me through the whole of this vile wall. <laughs> <laughs> Since 
lion vile, hath here deflowered my dear, which is, no, no, which was the fairest thing that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come tears, confound, ah! outsword, and well, the path of Pyramus, I, that left path, where her, that left path, where heart doth hop. Thus die I, thus I, thus I, and hung himself in Thisbe's garden, the play would have been such a fine tragedy. And so it is, truly. And very... Mm. Notably, discharge. Oh. Yeah! Half old twelve. Lovers to bed, it's almost fairy time. This palpable gross play hath well beguiled the heavy gate of night. Sweet friends to bed, a fortnight will we this solemnity, and nightly revels and new jollity. Now is the time of night, the graves all gaping up and wide. Everyone lets forth his spite, and the church went past the glide. And we fairies that do run in the presence of the sun, following darkness like a dream. Not even a mouse can disturb this hollow house.
Through the house give glimmering light, by the dead and drowsy fire, every elf and fairy sprite, hop as light as bird from briar, and this ditty after me, sing and dance it trippingly. First rehearse your song by rote, to each word a warbling note. Hand in hand with fairy grace will we sing and bless this place. Now until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray, and the breast by bed will we, which by us shall blessed be. So shall all the couples three, ever true and loving be. Every fairy take his gate, and each several chamber bless. Through this palace, with sweet peace, ever shall in safety rest. And the owner of it bless. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. members among us who we like to honor each and every year who play a very, very significant role in the lives and the development of every single cast member throughout their tenure in the play. We have four senior members of our cast this year that we would like to congratulate. And before we get our little gifts out, if I could have you four please step forward. One, two, three, four. very unexpectedly fun year, I will be honest. When we first began putting this production together, myself, the cast members, our brilliant director, producer, all of our adult leads, we had no idea how this was all going to play out. We were simply playing it by ear, hearken to the weather, listen to the voices coming down the food chain. We had to work with what we had. But through all of that, we are still here before you and you are still here to see us perform and for that, we thank you. And I believe we are ready for some presentations if my voice will hold up for that long. <laughs> Come on up, guys. <laughs> At least this is the last performance. <laughs> First up, to our... <laughs> Excuse us, many things in theater tend to run last minute, including our thankfulness. 
First up on our congratulatory list, we have Mr. Tom Munchen. I apologize that we couldn't find a mask for you sooner, sir, to use in the play, but we figured that your beautiful face needed no masking whatsoever. <laughs> For our Taylor and Miss Moonlight, Nora. Thank you very much. <laughs> They're quite the outstanding influence on our cast this year, showing us how to work our parts, and especially with the mechanicals, myself and our other four, very involved with you. We love to have you, and we're very, very sorry to see you go. Me as well. I love to be here. I love you, Norm. I love you. <laughs> Next up, for our... Let's see. Here. Just as I planned. For our fairy queen, Miss Lily. <laughs> you get another one? <laughs> we'll add a couple oh, on wow. there. Okay. <laughs> I'm honored. And last, but of course, nowhere close to least, we crown our fairy king, Another. Sam. One more. <laughs> <laughs> that forward and now This is so precarious. I've worked with Norwood Theatre for the past three years, and although I by no means would go to as far as to say I'm a veteran of the sport, I've still seen many, many seniors leave us each year. And I can say on behalf of all of the cast that it is a very sad day to be, for, to be completing our last performance of this play and to be seeing what very well may be the last chance that we will get to work with our senior crew at the end of all of this. We are very, very thankful to have worked with you thus far and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for spending your time, moving your lives, and moving your souls out onto this stage for the audience and for us. We thank you. Would any of our seniors like to say a couple words? Um, okay. <laughs> sure. You got that, Lily. I have been doing Norwood Theatre since freshman year, and honestly, this cast feels so ridiculously much like a family, and I'm going to be so, so sad to leave you guys, and I just want to remind you, I'm not trapped here with you, you are 100% trapped here with me, and I love you so much. Um, basically, same thing. Uh, I was in Legally Blonde with Lily. With <laughs> more like the minority of this cast. Not the minority. <laughs> Come on, Sam. But I am very thankful to be a part of this talented and wonderful community. But as you can tell, I'm not very good at improv. last year which was also a cast that I very much loved and felt like a family to them and I will be very very sad that like I won't have rehearsals and plays with them anymore and it's it saddens me hella <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm new to this. I've uh, been here about a few weeks. Uh, this has been wonderful and uh, it's a great experience. Thank you. One more round for our seniors, please. are interested in sticking around to speak with any of our cast members, we will be returning to our staging area momentarily and we'll be right back out to meet with you. Thank you all very much for your attendance and good evening. <laughs>